Let's take our first steps into the wonderful world of DeForce clothing simulation then. Just a gentle introduction here. We could talk for hours about DeForce and the amazing things that you can do with it, like helium flying balloons and waving flags and all that stuff. Uh, the most common way that we use DeForce inside Dash Studio is in fact of clothing simulation to make sure that once we've posed the figure, we apply DeForce and let it run and let it calculate the cloth draping. It's a proper cloth draping engine and it makes fitting clothing just so much nicer in Dash Studio if you know how to use it. So we're going to go through two examples here. One, we're going to stick with the standing pose of the previous episode with the Starless Toon character, but then we're going to have a look at what happens if we make her sit down on an item that is like a couch and we have a bit of a longer dress and how we'd make that work. So two exciting things you don't want to miss. Let's have a look here. This is the character that we've used in the previous episode, and we can see that there's this thing about her skirt in this pose. It doesn't look great. It looks like the skirt is intersecting with the legs. And for a real life skirt, this is not what cloth would look like. So I can see here that the dress tends to hug the legs. And that is because conforming clothing is designed to do that. It's designed to follow the character. But with dresses and with skirts that are kind of flaring or long coats and all that, that is of course a problem because it is trying to approximate the shape of the legs. It would have been even worse if we had a pose. Let me see if I can find one quickly just to show you that in which she spreads her legs like this. So if I were to do this, that is just not a good look for the dress because this is never what would happen with the real life skirt. The skirt would literally maybe just go to here and then it would just fall down. But because it's conforming clothing, it is trying to follow the angle of each leg and that isn't that isn't working well. It's also we've got the hand intersecting here. So that's that's really that's that's not a good look for the dress. So in real life, this wouldn't happen. And this is really where DeForce comes in handy. I'll go control Z to undo that and go back to my previous pose in which we're going to examine what this is going to look like after the draping process. So in order to kick off the simulation, the easiest thing that you can do is head over to the simulations tab here, which we have docked here, just in case your interface doesn't have it. Right click on any of the empty spaces here, head over to add pane and then find simulation from here. Likewise, you can also head over to window panes and then you find simulation settings down here. That'll do the same thing. Dock it somewhere sensibly. Once you open that tab, you can find a blue button that looks very similar to the render button. And that is really all we need to click in order to let DeForce calculate this thing. There are many other options here, some of which we'll look at in a moment. Let me just go and do this and hit that click the button. And sometimes what happens, usually once you've updated Das Studio, you get this little dialogue here that'll say, it appears that the DeForce kernels on your computer for NVIDIA GeForce My Graphics Card have not been compiled or have changed and need to be recompiled. The process can take several minutes to complete. Would you like to continue? I'm kind of glad this comes up. I will say yes, because at that point, DeForce is going to go ahead and do something in the background that is necessary only once. And once it's done it, that'll be that. And now you can see what's happening. My figure is springing back into the A pose. And then over a course of, well, let's say 30 frames or so, my actual pose that I had dialed in is being dialed in. And during that time, I can see that the clothing is being simulated in two parts, once kind of as a rough shape, and now it goes and lets the dress kind of dangle and wave this thing out. And then we can already see that even though there's a little bit of calculation left here, that my dress is now looking much better than it did before. And this works extremely well and super easy for standing poses like this. Look at that, it's beautiful. This is literally how the dress would fall in a real life situation, if there wasn't any wind that is. So if this was wider, we'd see a lot more wrinkles. If there was wind, which we, we can simulate with DeForce, there's something called a wind node that could blow this dress literally away and DeForce would then calculate the wind with that as well. It's kind of neat and it was literally just one click and also not only the bottom has been sorted out but also the top of the figure has been sorted out so the shoulders now fit much better than they did before and nothing hopefully is intersecting with my figure so sometimes we can still see poke through on our clothing and this is when you can go into the item like i've shown you in the previous episode select the dress 
then head over to parameters into the actors section and then have a look at what else you can adjust so if i wanted to now override some of the fit on the shoulder here i could do that there's also don't forget there's a search field if you need to fix something of a part that you know exists like the shoulder i can just go and look for that shoulder and there's adjust shoulder if i left click and drag that then i can you know i can i can see maybe something else needs fixing here if i do that that look at that it looks even better than before so that two good technologies working in tandem let me show you another simulation with this other pose that was that looked a little bit difficult. See if I can find it again. That was this one here. Double click that. Whoop, that I've only applied that to the dress, but not the figure. That is not what I wanted to do. Let me go and select the figure, then go and select that pose. There. Let's see what deforce makes of this. And this is once again, this is kind of a trial and error of uh, of deforcing. You might see that this looks different than the previous time I dialed this pose in, and that is because deforce remembers its simulated state, and I can go and reset that as well. In fact, let me go and show you that before I dial in that pose. Control Z, so that we go back to the previous state here. If I head over to the simulation settings, there is a clear button up here. And if my simulation didn't go well and I wanted to recalculate it from start, I can go and hit clear. And now you see that the dress follows the same contours as it did before and it would now need to be re-simulated and this is why my dress in fact looked different when i dialed in that that other pose here now it'll look exactly like it did in the beginning and it still is a new fixing so let's see what deforce makes of that so once again just hit the simulate button wait a moment in anticipation and see what happens I was kind of hoping this was going to happen. This is partly why I chose that pose, uh, not only because of the awkward legs, but also because this is a common problem when it comes to simulating deforced garments, and that is that the clothing explodes and completely falls apart. Dead giveaway is often when deforce starts calculating longer than it should. At this point, I can always hit the cancel button here because whatever happens next, I don't think we need to see that unless you're you know, interested in a horror movie or something. So there we go. This is not exactly the simulation that we had expected and I can tell you why this happened and you, you're probably going to come across this time and time again. DeForce doesn't like it when geometry intersects with the garment that is supposed to be simulated. So in our case it was the hand that went through the dress and when I then hit the simulate button that is when things go horribly horribly wrong. So I must make sure that doesn't happen. Another tragedy that happens is when DeForce is simulating, but the character is then intersecting with something and DeForce, the DeForce clothing is kind of in the middle and gets squeezed by two parts of geometry, like classic example, if a figure sits down. So we're going to deal with that one separately. But yes, yeah, so just in case this happens to you, uh, don't fret. It's happened to all of us many, many times. Hit the clear button and see how we can fix this. So the obvious issue is that her hand is inside the dress. So we don't really want for that to happen. The easiest way is now to adjust the pose because this is not something that would happen in real life and ideally her hand was is probably going to rest on top of the dress. So we use a little posing trick here and just select that lower arm and with your favorite posing tool either with the pose tool in the viewport here or your power pose tool that's the one that I prefer i just go and try to adjust the position of that arm so that it's kind of you know if it's if it wants to be in the same position then you know go and go and take care of it you can even go and just move it out of the way uh, deliberately more than it needs to be while it simulates and then you adjust the hand to be in the position that you want it to be and this is now not intersecting anymore and this should now simulate fine with deforce let's give it another go see what happens No, it was still not happy, so it was still not happy. Let's go cancel out of that and see if we can fix that somehow. You'll get to find this so many times. I don't actually know what the problem now was. It could be that the legs have an issue. It could also be that the arm here is too close at the top, so that's another possibility that we may have to fix. It's just, you know, sometimes you'll come across the fact that a pose like this is just not working, or it's also not quite worth the effort it takes to correct, to correct the deforce problems. Let's try to do something like this. Not so much that we want to use that pose, but just as a, you know, just a matter of interest of uh, does this work? So clear the simulation first and then go and simulate. Okay, it looks like it worked this time. And it is literally because 
the garment is no longer intersecting with anything with awkward positions like underarms hands inside the garment that is that is a dead giveaway that something is probably going to go wrong another thing that you might find is that during the simulation as you saw the character morph from the a pose to the actual pose you might find that in the final resting pose nothing is particularly intersecting but during that process of going from the a pose to the final resting pose an arm might go through clothing and that sets off an explosion so that's something that we're going to deal with in the next part where i'm going to show you how you can deal with that as an animation and with some additional deforce features there just one final thing before we leave it for this part if you want certain items of your simulation not to participate in it you can just make them invisible so like in this case it wasn't really a big deal because her hair is very low res but if you had very high res hair that you don't want to intersect with the dress then you can just go ahead and head over into the scene tab here find the hair or just right click and select it from the scene tab and just make it invisible and when you do that any invisible objects don't participate in the simulation. Let's take a look in the next part then how we can use DeForce with the principles of animation. Very interesting, some advanced features coming up there.